Welcome to Entry Point Church Virtual Service Online on YouTube, on Facebook. Today we are examining creativity during our quarantine. We're glad that you've joined us today. And now some homegrown creativity. Jeffrey Brown looks at a social media challenge that is drawing responses from around the world. There are no selfies being taken with the Mona Lisa right now. We captured this scene at the Louvre last year during the blockbuster Leonardo da Vinci exhibition. Instead, a new kind of selfie with art is making its way through social media, an updated version of Grant Wood's American Gothic. A dad and his home-from-school children in a loose version of a 17th-century Italian painting titled Lot and His Daughters. Appropriate to the moment, screams. The current call for recreating a work of art at home seems to have begun with a Dutch Instagram account called, in translation, Between Art and Quarantine. It was picked up by others, including the world-renowned Rijksmuseum in Amsterdam, celebrated for its Rembrandt collection. The result, playful recreations of old masters' paintings. In Los Angeles, the Getty started hashtag Getty Museum Challenge, inviting people to use digitized and downloadable artworks. Annalisa Stefan is the Getty's assistant director of digital content. Um, I've seen people connecting, total strangers connecting through this experience, cheering each other on and liking and commenting and favoriting their favorite creations. I also think art has a role to play in helping us make sense of this strange time. I thought maybe we'd be lucky if we got 30. That would sort of, that would have been a a big success. And I feel like we got probably closer to 30,000, maybe more. So totally surprised. Andy Warhol's soup cans get an update to toilet paper. A man stuck at home dreams of Napoleonic conquest. My favorite is um, a, a Renaissance manuscript page and the artist added a thermometer into the composition and she had been recovering from pneumonia at the time. So, um, you know, this kind of sadness of where we are today can coexist with the joy of being creative and seeing other people be creative in a really lovely way. Among the clear favorites for social distancing art lovers, pets in all kinds of poses and costumes, and the work of 17th century Dutch painter Johannes Vermeer. Sometimes, as in Pug with a Pearl Earring, Pet and painter come together. Another favorite, Mexican artist Frida Kahlo. One mother made her own version of Kahlo's self-portrait with monkeys. Alana Archer turned to household cleaning products. This challenge is clearly connecting people to art in new and creative ways and offering the rest of us a smile in the process. I am on a Zoom meeting conference with Lori Lee Andrews, whom, as you know, is an incredible artist. And we were having a conversation the other day, and she said to me, it is amazing because I did this piece of art several years ago, and it is now so unbelievably relevant. It is so unbelievably a description of our life right now. So Lori Lee, tell us about this piece of art. Tell us why you created it at the time that you did, but how you feel like you created that piece for such a time as this. Exactly. Um, Well, the name of the piece is Hot and Cold. And um, it's an image of a faucet. And uh, it's an etching that has been watercolored. And um, the image is a reflection of a metaphor that a friend shared with me during a really tumultuous time in my life when I was trying to figure some things out and I was um, really struggling. I think I was having the feeling like I must be doing everything wrong because this bad thing or this sad thing is happening in my life. And um, if I was doing it right, there wouldn't be any sadness or this wouldn't happen or that wouldn't happen. And my my friend said, you know, use the phrase, life is like a faucet. But the reason is because a faucet um, brings forth every temperature of water. If you want hot water, you go to the faucet. If you want cold water, you go to the faucet. If you don't want cold water, that's too bad. It comes out of the same faucet as the hot water. So one way or the other, 
you're going to get a mixture of things. They all come from the same source. So I did this piece and as you look at it, you can see that coming out of the faucet is, um, it looks like water, but inside and all around are all kinds of little icons that represent their symbols of different events in our lives. Um, there's a baby bottle and um, baby toys, but then just a little, on the, kind of on the other side, there's um, a graveyard. There's a mother bird on one side with a nest and all of her little chicks and um, she's feeding them a worm. And on the other side, um, there's someone's hand holding a dead bird that they have found. Um, there are all kinds of different icons that, that when we see them, you know, you see a birthday cake and, you know, that, that evokes joy or whatever. Anyway, the whole point is our whole lives are filled with events that are hot or cold, you know, maybe we classify them as good or bad or tragic, sad. Um, all of those events in our lives are part of our life. We, we take them on in the same way that we take on the great stuff that comes because it all comes from the same source. And in that way, it's actually uh, it, it, the good, the bad and the ugly, it's all a gift and it all helps to create the lives that we seek to have. Um, so we were talking about different paradoxes and um, during this time of quarantine, I feel like I have experienced just the gambit of emotions. Um, I've been incredibly uh, sad and worried because I have relatives who have had the COVID virus. I know people who have been a victim to it. I know people who have died from it. I currently have an aunt who is on a ventilator and it's very tragic and upsetting to me. At the same time, here's all this time that we have. I can't tell you how many times in my life I've said, gosh, if I just had more time, I would meditate, I would take long walks, I would do this, I would do that. It's been a complete gift, like a dream come true. And yet, I'm, I'm also um, just blown away by the fact I can't, I don't get to go and see my mom. I don't get to give my mother a hug. This piece of art is a metaphor for something that happens in our lives constantly. When we're little, we're taught that if, we, if, if we're bad, bad things will happen to us. Or if we're good, good things will happen to us. And if we do what we're told, and, and that's, <laughs> that's not true. You know, our, our lives are a collage of good things and bad things and happy things and sad things. And um, our choice is how we respond to them and what we choose to learn from every event in our life. But we don't get to learn those things unless we're open and accepting and we open up to the experience of our emotions and not to be afraid to let our, over, our emotions overlap, you know, um, not to be afraid of the times when we're having fun, even though something sad just happened. Um, you know, I, I think we all want to live authentically and fully. And so turn the faucet on, you know and be, be prepared to love it all. So, so that day when we were talking about it, I thought, oh my gosh, that piece that I made years ago, maybe I made it for now because maybe it's supposed to illustrate these times. Are you currently working on any piece of artwork? I actually have. Um, I actually made, for example, I made a journal. I do a lot of book arts and I made a journal out of a roll of toilet paper. And so when you unroll it, 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 it's like a scroll. And I've written all these things about my experiences about um, being in quarantine on a roll of toilet paper with the idea that, okay, someday when someone finds this, they'll think, oh, it's a precious roll of toilet paper. Oh no, it's a journal. 
I mean, that was one of the things I've done. I've done some things for the Harrison Center that are on their um, Instagram page. Um, I did a, um, a takeoff on Project Runway or Making the Cut where I did um, quarantine couture and I did a sketch of myself, um, you know, wearing uh, circa 2005 Target yoga pants with a pajama top and a sweatshirt and a and um, a quilt that my grandma or an Afghan my grandma crocheted for me when I was in high school, um, and fuzzy slippers, of course. I've actually made a lot of artwork during this time, and the point is, it's such a quiet time. I can hear myself think, and I can digest my own thoughts and process them creatively to make something. Um, I it, it's kind of a dream come true in that way. My cousin sent me this meme that is hysterical and it's my exact life. It's someone lost in making art. How would you encourage us to dive into some art that maybe we've never tried to do it while we have this quarantine time. And I think what's really important is to know, is to embrace that we are all creatives and creativity doesn't look, it doesn't fit into a black and white box. It can mean a lot of different things. Your creativity, your work of art could be like some great recipe that you know your grandma used to make and you dig it out and, and cook it to perfection. That is a work of art. Good morning. Please join me in prayer. God of all gifts, giver of grace, creator of the universe, thank you for the gift of creative energy and the freedom we have to let it flow in our lives, cleansing our soul and connecting to you. Change happens when we begin to see that good and bad come from the same faucet. Both are beneficial in our continued growth. Perhaps we still struggle trying to control the temperature and avoid the pain we feel when things are heated and uncomfortable. We sometimes experience times when it seems like there's a series of clogs keeps us stuck in the negative energy and it is difficult to be hopeful. Maybe the clogs force us to acknowledge the debris that stands in our way and acceptance is necessary to let go and trust you. Thank you, God, for your unconditional love and the ability you have to take our deepest sorrows and weave them into a pattern for good. Today, we can step aside and flow in peace. Amen. Well, one of the things that uh, Jim and I have uh, been working on together is building furniture. We found that we really enjoyed doing it. But for me, it was really more of a hands-on artistic endeavor and I realized that I had gotten very away from that and didn't realize how much I missed it. What we've done is this lovely counter uh, cabinet and countertop here. And we made all of it from scratch except for the glass. And the wood was my contribution. And uh, I had this old ugly board because we wanted driftwood and I had nothing to match it. So I took this out in the garage, beat the heck out of it with a hammer and then came in and faux painted it. And when doing that, I realized how much I miss actually painting and doing projects. So I want to get back to doing them again. I really started out with photography back in 2019 when I took a class at my high school. It was really fun. I really enjoyed it. I was cooking with it. Uh, it was my favorite class for a long time and I met a lot of cool people through it. I, I just really got into photography after that. Uh, photography has helped me out a lot through this quarantine uh, because it's nice to like 
have a have a passion or have a project to do while you're kind of locked up. I could easily go out in my backyard here and take photos. I can go on walks. I have like a lot of different scenery I can I can go and take photos at. And you don't necessarily have to be around people to take the type of photos I like taking. Um, so it's it really it's it's helped me out a lot through this to just know that I have something like sitting right next to me that I can pick up any time and just take some cool photos. has the possibility of bringing us together in ways none of us would have been able to predict or expect. Eight, two, seven, nine. I'm so small, said the mole. Yes, said the boy. But you make a huge difference.
Thank you for joining our service today. We hope that you found something to give you comfort, encouragement, and inspiration. Join us next week as guest speaker Betty Ellison will examine the ways we have adapted and adjusted to our new normal in her message entitled, The Art of the Swerve. In the meantime, have a great week. Do your very best to keep your head held high, to keep your chin up, and go in peace. Amen.